All right, what's up mga ka-investa? Welcome back to another show of the Business Talk. And we have a very special guest once again, Mr. Ian Paradis. What's up, sir? Hi, Renzo. Thank you for having me on your, on your show. Thank you very much, sir. So before we begin, I would like to thank Sir Ian because he brought me a very special gift. And that's what we're going to be talking about mostly for today is the <laughs> Encanto beer. So he got me a bunch of beers. Sobrang maraming salamat, sir. And we're going to try to taste it later and I'm going to show you guys what it looks like from the inside. It's very beautiful, the packaging. Sobrang ganda niya. But anyway, let's start with the business side naman of Encanto beer. So um, a lot of you might be familiar with this brand. If you go to Poblacion or Makati, that's where I first tried it in Poblacion and a few times in business meetings. So um, the product is really good. I tried it. I love the taste. But what was your inspiration of bringing this into the Philippines given that, you know, when you think about beer in the Philippines, diba? Right? Yeah. That's the first brand that comes to a lot of people's mind is, of course, San Miguel. Yes, yes. They've been here for a very <laughs> long time. So what's your inspiration behind this product, sir? Well, I think one of the, one of the uh, uh, things I always have to tell people when I'm first meeting them is many, many times my clients, my B2B clients at least, restaurant owners, bar owners, managers, generally think I'm a foreigner. <laughs> mm. And then uh, gulat sila when they find out I'm, I'm, I'm Filipino. Right, and um, so one of the main uh, uh, inspirations, really, or, or 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 reasons for me to to start the business um, was came up in about 2015, end of 2015. I had just moved back home from Indonesia. I was I was assigned to Indonesia for three years, working for a family business previously, um, and I've loved beer for a long time. As you said, I grew up drinking. Uh, you know, I, I grew up actually in Cebu. Not mm-hmm. here in Metro Manila, so I grew up drinking SMB and Tanduay. Um, <laughs> and um, one, of, one of the biggest um, goals for me when I first decided to put up Encanto was, um, well, two major reasons. The first being that um, I always wanted choice, you know, when it came to, 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 local, to local brands, because um, I'm a big supporter of local brands. And it always bothered me that when I was growing up, up until I was in my 30s, there were really only four or five big Philippine liquor brands, right? And, and all of them were kind of focused on a very specific type of product, which was commercial, commercial scale, right? So whether it be commercial beers or commercial spirits. Um, so one is I wanted to, to, you know, present something that was more premium, um, in our case, craft beer, to the market to just provide Filipinos with a choice, right? Um, more than what we were used to having available to us from a local standpoint, because we've had imported products for a long time. Um, but from a, from a, a lo- local standpoint, um, we've always kind of been limited to a, v- a very few number of brands, uh, specifically within this industry. So that was one reason. Um, it always bothered me that we had so little choice uh, when it came to local options. But also, it, it's always bothered me that it, Filipinos... Uh, have to believe something is, is premium if, it's, if it comes from abroad, mm. right? If it's European or it's, it's American or Japanese, it's premium. If it's Filipino, it's not. So in, in my case, it, it, that's always bothered me because I, I believe that we could do things just as good as anyone else can, right? And when you go abroad and you ask people from abroad, oh, what's your perception of Filipinos? It's always so positive, right? We really have the best reputation around the world. And how come, it, how come we ourselves can't believe we could make products as good as anyone else can when everyone else has a, such a good uh, perception of us, right? So it's also to change our attitude on, on how we look at what we're capable of doing. Um, you know, I think we could do premium products just as good as anyone. Um, and in, in, in Canto's case, uh, we wanted to do that for craft beer, right? Share, share, our ability to make things just as good as anyone else can, um, but make sure that our product was also very Filipino-centric, right? Uh, considering that we are a Filipino company. Yes, yeah, so what, before, before going into the market, of course, you said that there, 
there's a very small amount of choices when it comes to beer. Why do you think that is for the Philippines? Um, well, I think one is that the, the companies that, that do exist um, are uh, very well managed and they've been around for a long time, right? So reputationally, they've, om- they've almost become synonymous with the product they sell. Mm-hmm. So you know how people say Kleenex when they're referring to tissue or Colgate when they're referring to, uh, to toothpaste or, or Xerox when they're referring to copying? Mm-hmm. I guess we, in our case, that's really what SMB uh, represents when it comes to beer or Tandwai rum or GSM when it's gin. Um, so it's, I think a lot of people sometimes get scared to, to start a company that may be competing with them, uh, with those types of companies. But from our case, we don't really look at ourselves as, as direct competition because it's a very different category, right? Um, uh, in those cases, it's commercial beers. In our case, it's craft beer. So it's a slightly different category um, so we don't look at ourselves necessarily as direct competitors. All right. So is it because of the process of making beer? Because if you compare the brewery to other kinds of businesses, yeah. it's, it looks a little bit more difficult or intimidating. Do you think that? Um, I mean, it's not, uh, in, in a sense, it's, it's quite a simple process. Uh, the problem is it requires a lot of discipline. Um, and, and really, you're, you're, you're only using or you're meant to only use four ingredients, right? So mm-hmm. um, it's not necessarily a, a very uh, difficult process, but because it's manufacturing, it does, it's obviously quite capital intensive um, to put up the business if you, if you want to put up a full brewery and, and full yes. packaging line. So it can be capital intensive. Um, and I guess that's one of the barriers of entry, right? It's, it's the cost. Uh, to put up a business. But again, you don't have to start very big. Um, you could start with a much smaller system, um, you know, single or, 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 mm-hmm. or two bottle uh, bottling system, uh, which, which isn't too capital intensive. Um, but if you want scale, it, it can be. Mm, all right. So if you want to, let's say you want to start small as a very small brewery, what, yeah. what do you think your first goals should be? As a business? Um, I think, well, one is, I always believe that you have to love what you do, right? Um, if, if you don't love what you're doing, is it really worth taking that risk and, and putting up that business, right? Um, mm. But if you, if you love beer and, and, and um, you want to share that, that passion with, with your, uh, whether it be customers or even family and friends, a lot of the best brewers, for example, in the United States started off as home brewers. Uh, a lot of them had their own day jobs um, and were brewing at home and just kind of honed in a skill, um, a natural mm-hmm. skill to, to develop good beers. And from there, they launched their own craft breweries. But you could start very small. Um, a lot of the tools actually to make beer, you could use home materials. So like, you know, the, 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 the recyclable uh, water bottles, the reusable water bottles, the big mm-hmm. ones that we put into water coolers. Okay. Um, you could use... Uh, stuff like that, uh, mm-hmm. big glass glass bottles um, to, 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 to brew. Okay. So, the biggest thing I got from that is really do what you love. Uh, I, I, I'm a firm believer in that. Uh, I so, love beer, so, so, yeah. so selling it makes it a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did you get exposed to beer? So, first is how did you get exposed to drinking it? And yeah. then to the process of uh, learning how to make beer yourself. Okay. Well, I probably shouldn't say what age I started drinking beer because I might get <laughs> in trouble. But uh, <laughs> as you know, um, you know, here we, we, we do start quite early. Um, but I, beer's kind of always been my main, my main drink. Um, mm-hmm. I enjoy it a lot because I, I, I like to be out with, you know, with, with family and friends and um, what I've always loved about beer is because it is a low alcohol beverage, um, you know, you could drink more of it and last a lot longer. Um, and, and in general, I've just always enjoyed the drinking it, right? The, the taste profile. Um, so I grew up, I mean, being Filipino, I grew up drinking lagers most of my life. Um, and I still am a, a lager guy. Um, if you were to ask me my preference, I still lean towards lagers and pilsners because uh, they're typically uh, crisp, more crisp and refreshing. But 
what got me into craft beers was my time when I was when I was studying in the U.S. and and after my after college uh, working in the U.S. for a bit. That's where I really got into craft beers. I started to explore different kinds of beers, ales, dark beers, um, sours. And when I was in college, that was quite a while back. So uh, even the craft beer boom in the States hadn't really taken off yet, but the, the profiles were so different. And, and that's when I fell in love with, with what craft beer was, right? And what it represented. Um, and it, funny enough, it was always a dream that I joke about with my, with my closest cousins that I wanted to someday start a brewery or a, or a distillery, but never in a million years did I actually think it would happen, you know, until uh, 2017 when we launched, when we launched the brand. But it was, it was my time in the U.S. Mm. Um, and then it became habit now. After that, every time I'd travel to a new country or new city, I'd always make it a point to try new, new breweries. Um, and the nice thing about the States, similar to Poblacion, right? A lot of the breweries, you could go to the brewery and they have their own bar or restaurant. Mm -hmm. So you yes. could actually drink on site um, and try the beers there. The experience is so different. Mm. All right. So how about the learning process of making beer? How did you get exposed to that? Wow. Um, to be honest, I'm really, at, if this is the learning curve, I'm at the bottom still. Um, and it, one, one of the first things I, I told myself when I decided to put up Encanto was, as much as I love beer and as much as I want to start my own brewery, I have no idea how to make it. Um, so a, a, a few months after that, what I did was I enrolled myself in a introduction, introduction to brewing course mm -hmm. um, in UC Davis, uh, which has one of the best uh, brewing programs in the, in the US. And I did a, a, a two day course uh, in introduction to brewing just to familiarize myself and really understand the process. But I also knew that you know, I wouldn't be able to learn what I needed to in even a year or two. So I, I, I traveled around the U.S. with my dad, meeting with different uh, breweries to partner with. Um, and we ended up partnering with uh, Josh, uh, my, one of my co-founders, Josh Carton, um, who, who part owned a, a brewery called Proclamation Ale in Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. All right. So Josh Carton is your business partner in Encanto Brewery. Yes. Yes. And he's, he's, a, he's a brewer himself. So he, he understood the process. Um, you know, as much as I love beer and I know what beers I like, uh, I didn't want to assume that I could learn it within a few mm. months of, you know, deciding to put up the business. All right. So he's more yeah. of the, the process of making the beer. Are you more of the business person in, this, in the partnership for yes. that? Correct. Correct. On the selling side. <laughs> ah. So business-wise, sir, where did you get your experience? Naman? Um, I think, well, the, the, the comfortability with, with, with putting up my own business really came, uh, of course, from my time working with, with, with the family business. Um, mm. You know, if, if it weren't for those nine years um, working there, I probably wouldn't have, have felt... Uh, uh, confident enough to put up my own business. So I think that experience, even though it was a completely different industry, that experience kind of gave me the, the confidence um, to, put up, to put up the business on top of, of course, all the, all the support I was getting from my family um, who really kind of pushed me. And, and because to be 100% honest, there were times, and there are still times now where you question yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Did I make the right decision? Should I have just stuck to my old job and you know, mm. um, continue that, with that? Um, but I think if uh, as someone that puts up their own business, if you're not asking yourself that question every once in a while, there's something wrong, right? Um, but it was obviously all the, all the support that, that my wife and, and my parents and sister and cousins and friends gave me that allowed me to keep pushing forward until, until we actually launched the product. Because from inception... Uh, from, inception to actual launch was quite a long time it was i'd say a year a year and a half mm. about a year and a half from when the idea came up to start a brewery versus actually launching a product it was about a year and a half okay and then you mentioned earlier that of course one of the challenges is the the huge capitalization 
that yes. you need for this. Where did you get most of your capital when you so were when starting? I, when, when I first started, it actually, we started much smaller scale uh, than, than the current facility we have now. Um, we started with a small brewery in Makati um, that was purely, keg, uh, purely keg, kegging operation. Uh, we didn't do any bottles then because uh, a, a, a full packaging line is quite capital intensive. Um, so we started with a, a much smaller facility. Um, and in the beginning, it was actually, um, I put up all the funds um, to originally launch the company. And as we, as we started to grow, the smaller facility started to expand. Then we started to bring on um, uh, uh, shareholders, new shareholders. All right, all right. Yeah. So I think we should take a break. And I really, I'm really dying to try the beer. Sure. <laughs> sure, I'll join you. I'll join you for that. <laughs> all right. So I'll start with the lager because you said this is your favorite. No, sir. Yes. And always start light. Uh, the uh, best is always to start with the lighter beers because it's hard to enjoy big beers. Um, your palate kind of becomes desensitized um, and it's harder to enjoy the lighter beers if you start out with the really big beers. Mm, so would you consider this is lighter? Yes. Yeah, so from, uh, from both an alcohol and, and, and like kind of uh, flavor and, and body standpoint, uh, it would be our lightest of the five beers. Mm. Yeah. So when you say light, it's not really, it doesn't mean it has lower alcohol content. Is that? No, not, okay. well, uh, that's part of it. Um, mm -hmm. the, the ABV, of course, plays a big role. Okay. Um, but but uh, you could have a beer that's, that's light in alcohol, but has a ton of, of flavor and body to it. Mm. Um, so our lager is our only non-ale of what we call like our five flagship beers. And uh, to me, it's, it's the one I drink the most of. Um, because it again, it's easy to drink. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's quite crisp, um, and and you could have a few of them, right, without feeling the alcohol. All right. <laughs> and this is what you drink every day, like what you said before the yeah. interview. Yeah. So these are safe for interviews. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, sir, you have one here. I do. I have one here. I'll open one now. Okay. <laughs> All right. So before I open this, I'd like to admire. How beautiful the packaging is. So from Thank the bottle, you. everything is quality, everything is premium. Nung nakita ko siya, I was amazed because when you look at it, it's very beautiful. Thank you. All right. Yeah, it was a it was a cousin of mine that uh, did all the all the design work oh. for the for the logo and the and the labels. Okay, medyo bubble up lang siya. All right. So. Is there a proper way to drink beer? <laughs> well, you know, one of, the, one, of the, one of the things that we like to talk about during trainings is the foam, right? Mm -hmm. uh, as you see, you, you have a, there you have a good, what we call head, uh, head of foam. So this one. Okay. We, we, I remember growing up, people used to think that bubbles were bad. And mm -hmm. whenever I'd get a beer poured like at a bar or a restaurant, they'd always make sure there were no bubbles. You know, they'd pour it slowly from the side of the glass. Oh. But, but the foam is actually very important for the beer because it, it protects the carbonation. So, and, and also uh, outside of that, it allows you to release the CO2 in the glass rather than in your body. So it also helps in terms of gas, right? Um, the, the more foam you're able to, to, to generate in the glass, uh, the less gas it produces inside your stomach. Okay, okay. Yeah. So it's very light from the looks of it. Yes. And, Actually, yeah. even from, you notice from haziness, it's quite clear, right? Yes. Um, so of all our beers, even from, from a raw material standpoint, it's, it's the simplest. Mm -hmm. But you'll notice that outside of, of more traditional lagers, you do have some uh, like subtle uh, citrus notes, like almost zesty notes to it, yeah. but very subtle. All right. All right. Cheer, cheers, sir. Cheers, Renzo. <laughs> Sige, tatry ko lang siya para ma-describe ko. And please sa... call me Ian. Please call me Ian. Ian, Ian. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Oh, it's very floral like how I remember it from before. It's very, very floral. So one of the things that we always recommend is with craft beers to drink it 
get out of a glass, whether you're you know, whether it's draft or can or bottle, if you have the opportunity to drink it uh, in a glass, mm -hmm. um, we encourage that because okay. Mm. All right. Hello. All right. So, Mejon, I think something's strong along with the internet connection. But so basically, try to drink it from the glass, not from uh, yes. red cups or <laughs> any other. Yeah. Any as long <laughs> as you could get, you know, you could enjoy the aroma of the beer. That should be mm. your first experience with it, not taste. Because, of course, college we're more exposed to the red cups. While drinking beer, no yes. sir. <laughs> <laughs> any cup, any cup uh, works. Any cup works. All right, all right. <laughs> so you you mentioned there are only four ingredients to the beer, right? Yeah. And you currently have five flavors. Yes. Can you five, can you what we call our flagships? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Okay. But when you look at the flavors, they all have different tastes different uh, fragrances, right? So how do you... Yes. You look at... Sorry. All right. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. All right. So how do, you, how do you create those differences in the flavor and the, the smells when you create your beer with only four, four ingredients? So, yeah, great, great question. Um, actually, one of the keys is uh, depending on the type of, of, of profile you want your beer to have, right? You, you then, for, for people that are familiar, like with brewmasters in particular, who are familiar with kind of what, what notes, what flavor profiles, certain hop, hop, hop strains and certain malts give off mm -hmm. and yeast strains, you then start to formulate your recipe. So if you want your beer to be more citrus forward, more, more pine or earth forward, um, do you want it to have... A more robust mouthfeel or more mouth forward or more hop forward? Do you want it to be bitter? Do you want it not to be too bitter and have just more, much more flavor and aroma? So depending on the, on the beer type you want to make and the profile you want to get, uh, that's what justifies your recipe. Um, so, so you could use different hops that, that really bring out different flavor profiles, um, different, different types of malt, right? Uh, barley, a combination of barley and wheat mm. and oats. Uh, you could even use rice. Um, and that's really what gives you the, 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 the flavor you're, you're getting from the beer when drinking it. Oh, all right. Yeah. All right. So, of course, we are in a health pandemic, no, sir? Yes. So, before this, how was Encanto Brewery doing? Um, so, I mean, uh, you know, uh, growth has been great um, since, since we started. Um, of course, we still have a long way to go. Um, and, and we still do consider ourselves a startup at the end of the day, right? And, and, and like any normal business, it, it, it does take several years, especially a consumer brand, right? Mm -hmm. To build up the brand awareness. And because it is manufacturing heavy, um, it's a big operation. But uh, in, in the past, before COVID-19, um, most of our business was driven by B2B. Mm. Uh, so selling to restaurants, uh, bars, hotels, sports clubs. And as well as, uh, of course, um, groceries, right? Some of the uh, big grocery and convenience stores group, uh, groups here in the country. Uh, but because of the current situation, that's kind of changed how, how we have to look at, at, at the business, right? At the yeah. business model. Um, because there's a lot of unknowns. We don't know when things are going to go back to normal. Um, so now the focus has kind of shifted to B2C. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the nice thing about alcohol like food, like tobacco, like medicine, is that people always want it, people always need it. Um, uh, but it's how, how to get it to them, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and of course, I completely understand a lot of people, um, including myself, don't, aren't yet too comfortable going out and being around big crowds, um, right? Because we don't have a vaccine yet, we don't have a, a treatment yet, a, a, a clear treatment, um, and we haven't seen cases uh, start to decrease yet. Yeah. So, um, when things will go back to normal, I don't know, but it's of course forced it, forced us to to really shift our focus. All right. So, how are you doing that shift right now? Um, well, we we were lucky enough in the sense to have launched our our e-commerce platform early this year, 
Mm -hmm. um, we hadn't marketed it yet um, before the lockdown because we still wanted to really perfect the, you know, the experience, the customer experience uh, on the website and, and, and really sort out any kinks because, um, you know, starting a website is not easy, right? So much more so with a, with a full e-commerce platform. But we were lucky enough to have launched that in, in January this year. So now kind of transitioning to, to B2C um, has, has made it obviously a, a, a little more simple, but mm -hmm. we still have a long way to go because this is, this is not a channel that we looked at in the past. All right. So if you look at it, no, most businesses are starting to really go full force online because of the current situation. Yeah. And, and beer happens to be one of those products. It's like when you go to a grocery, right? Even though you need water, mm -hmm. it's such a hassle because it weighs so much, right? Yes. Out of all your groceries, it weighs three fourths of the, of the and, and takes up a lot of space. So with products like water and beer and soft drinks, if you could get it delivered directly to your door, the better, right? So that's how we kind of see it as well. Um, but of course, we, we want to do, we really want to build a combination of selling uh, directly to our customers uh, via, via our e-commerce platform and also selling through our partner, our, our off-trade partners um, like SNR, Landers, Boozy, Family Mart um, to grow that business as well. And at the end of the day, I think, you know, a B2B will come back and, and people will start to go out again for out for dinner and drinks um, with their friends and colleagues. It's just really a question of when. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. So do you have any long-term goals for, for Encanto Brewery? Um, I think the, the, to me, I, I've gotten that question before and mm -hmm. right now we're so young. It's really just to build the brand. Um, I, I really just want to get our beers out to throughout the country, um, you know, get many Filipinos and, and foreigners visiting the Philippines to try a, a, a local craft beer and, and help educate the market, right? Along with all the other local craft breweries on what beer can be. Because beer, beer is in many cases so much more than what we thought it was in the past. You know, um, beer could be fun. Beer could incorporate a lot of local ingredients, um, so it's really, at this point, that's the goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So where do you get most of the ingredients from? Um, so the water is, is the one ingredient, the raw material ingredient that we source locally, of course. Um, but even with water, right, depending on where you're sourcing your water, in many cases, it has to be treated mm -hmm. uh, for you to, to, to hit the parameters you need um, for, for, for the beer. But Unfortunately, for a lot of the raw material ingredients, such as hops and malt, um, it's hard to, it's very hard to grow locally. Mm -hmm. uh, hops is actually grown in, in very, very specific uh, parts of the world, um, specifically the North West and North Central US, uh, oh. Czech, Germany, UK, um, Australia, and New Zealand. While malt, um, although we can grow certain grain here in the Philippines, of course, it's more of the malting uh, facilities. Uh, which we don't have. Mm. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I, I don't want to forget about this because I really love the branding of Encanto Beer. Yeah. All right. So let's talk <laughs> about the name itself, Encanto, and uh, what gave you the inspiration to make it look like this. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, you growing up in Cebu, uh, I'm, I'm sure you may be familiar all the all the horror stories that come out of, of the Visayas <laughs> uh, with Siki horror in particular, for some reason, mm. um, being very, very, uh, very uh, mysticism uh, focused. Yes. Right. But, um, you, you know, growing up there, I just love the stories. Um, mm. You know, the, all the stories of duendes and capres. <laughs> and, and I have to be honest. I, I used to ask permission many times when I, when I'd enter like a, a wooded area, just because of the stories I was told, um, I'd ask permission to enter um, as a kid. And I felt that when, when I was trying to, to, to select a name for the business, I wanted something that was very Filipino, yet not stereotypically Filipino, mm -hmm. right? And, and I felt what, what was nice about Encantos, it represented our, our local superstition, our, our local culture, right? We're, we're, we believe a lot in folklore and mysticism. 
but I feel a lot of the younger generation has lost touch of those mm. stories. So it was kind of bringing back something that was traditionally Filipino, uh, similar to what craft beer kind of represents, right? Uh, representing traditional ways of making beer and staying true to what beer should be, right? Which is those four, those four natural ingredients. And I felt it kind of represented what we were trying to do with craft beer and touched or something that was very local. Um, and the reason why we chose the, the death head moth uh, as our logo, and a lot of people ask me, why is there a skull on your logo? Mm. It's actually not a skull. It's the moth, that, that particular moth has like a, a skull-shaped pattern. Yeah, a skull-shaped pattern on its, on its body. Uh. So we wanted, and the death head moth is actually a Filipino moth found in Southeast Asia. So oh. th that combined with the fact that a lot of our a lot of our local superstition revolves around butterflies and moths, like I'm sure you're you're familiar with if if you have a loved one that passes away, and you see a moth or butterfly, right? They say it's it's your it's their spirit visiting you. Yeah. Or my favorite was growing up, my my yaya used to scare my sister and I. She used to tell us, "Don't don't touch the moth, huh? Because if you touch your eyes, bulag ka." I'm pretty sure that wasn't true, but I didn't want to be the first idiot to touch a moth and go blind, right? So in many ways, I, I believed it, right? In a way, even though I, I, I knew it was most likely not true. So that connection, uh, you know, uh, between moths and butterflies and our local superstitions, we felt it was a great representation of Encanto mm -hmm. and what we wanted Encanto to represent. Um, so that's, that's really how the, how the brand name came about. Oh wow, sobrang ganda. Wow, okay. All right. Actually, I, I think I also believe in the <laughs> yeah. The moth I'm, thing. I'm, I'm still never done it, huh? and I'm, I'm thirty. I'm thirty-seven. <laughs> <laughs> it's too big of a of a risk. <laughs> it's too big of a risk. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So part of this interview, sir, is to really uh Ian is to really try to deconstruct and get inspiration from. Filipino entrepreneurs like you. So yeah. I'd like to get into your strengths or like the qualities you believe make you a successful entrepreneur. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think uh, one of uh, my, my strengths would be like with, with beer, is, is, it's meant to be a very social product, right? Um, I think uh, what's nice about selling beer is that you're not really selling a product. It's not like a piece of clothing or a TV, right? It's, you're almost selling a memory, right? Because people typically when we drink, we're out with family, we're out with friends, we're celebrating something and it's going to create a story that you're going to talk about for years, possibly your whole life. So, and me being a very social person, um, I, love, I love being able to sell a product like that. Um, I, I, I am very proud of, of what our team has been able to, you know, to come up with and produce. And so to me, I'd say kind of, you know, just sharing the story of, of Encanto and what we represent um, uh, is one of the things I enjoy doing the most. Um, and, and again, really pushing, pushing um, Filipino strengths, right? Um, trying to show that we could do things just as good as anyone else. Um, I, I would say those would probably be my strengths. Because um, mm. I, I really do want to share you know, I, I'm proud of what we do and I, I really want to share it with, with all Filipinos, right? And every foreigner that visits the Philippines. Um, but, and I, I'm, I also like, you know, coming up with new ideas on, on how, to, how to market the product. Um, my issue is execution. Mm -hmm. I love coming up with ideas, but I'm not very good at executing them. <laughs> thank mm -hmm. God I have a great, thank God I, I work with a great team that really helps me, you know, Focus and 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 prioritize one one thing at a time. All right, all right, yeah. all right. So that's the secret sauce of yeah. Ian. All right. But all I right. think there is there is no secret sauce uh -huh. uh, to, uh, per se, right? But mm -hmm. but I do obviously. I I'm a still a firm believer in that the most important uh, characteristic is hard work, right? Hard work. Um, no matter how smart you are, how, how great of idea you have, uh, how much luck you have, timing, at the end of the day, 
if you look at any successful entrepreneur or, or, or businessman or, or businesswoman or anyone in general, no matter what profession, no matter what profession they're in, right? It, it really comes down to hard work. Um, you could never discount that. All right. Hard work is key. Yeah. All right. So how about learning? What's your, do you have any favorite books that changed your life? Well, I mean, you're going to laugh. <laughs> My favorite books are actually Harry Potter, the Harry mm. Potter series. Um, but more, again, because I'm, I'm very social, right? Um, yes. And you, what Harry Potter represented, right, was friendship, loyalty, um, you know, focus on, 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 on the good, right? And try to see the best in, in people and things. Um, but uh, I, I guess those are, those are the reasons why I, I love Harry Potter, right? The series so much. Um, yeah. And, and it's right. something I, I get to do with my kids as well which they love. So it's even more fun now, right? Yeah. yeah. So Harry Potter, uh, it, it, make, it reminded me of a certain type of beer there, no? Yes. Which is a, the... A, a, a butter beer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so are you planning to release something similar to that? Well, part? you know, we've, we've, we've done... Um, Unfortunately, with, with, with our bottled products, we've only, we've only kind of produced our five flagship beers in, in, in bottle format. But we have tried to incorporate some really fun local ingredients. Like I'm a, I'm a huge fan, obviously, of uh, local fruits like mango. Is, Philippine mm-hmm. mango to me is the best fruit in the world. Uh, mm-hmm. Nothing comes close to it, right? So um, we've tried to incorporate things like dalandan. Um, mm-hmm. We've done some beers with dalandan, with... Uh, calamansi, uh, coconut, raspberries. The, the problem is we've only done them in small batches, very small batches in keg format. So we've only sold them in a few bars, specifically Polilia in Poblacion. Mm. Um, but outside of that, you know, down the road, we're actually looking at really um, introducing seasonal and specialty beers uh, in bottle format that incorporate, start to incorporate local, local ingredients. So similar to butter beer. Um, but our own local version. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay. Do you have, who's your, who would you consider your biggest mentor growing up, whether it be life or business-wise? Yeah. Uh, I mean, from a business standpoint, of course, I've, I've always looked up to, to my, uh, my dad and, and my uncles and, mm. and you know, cousins that, that all, uh, with, with several of them, I got to work with personally. Uh, the nine years before I, I put up Encanto, um, you know, just seeing them uh, put in, um, you know, most of their life uh, into into the job um, and really focusing on growing the business, the businesses they, they were involved in and, you know, creating jobs and, and innovating and, and, and uh, giving back uh, was a huge inspiration for me. I mean, that's really what, what drove me to get into business in the first place. Um, but from a from a global standpoint, I, I'm I'm a huge fan of, of Warren Buffett and Bill Gates. Oh, uh, okay. Um, just what they've been able to achieve in one generation, right? And the fact that they'll they'll most likely be known hundred years from now more for what they're doing to give back to society rather than what they did from a business standpoint um, inspires me a lot. Um, and 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 the people that they become, right, um, inspires me a lot. The, the maturity, the growth. Uh, during their career, throughout their career. All right. All right. So we're down to our last question. Yeah. So that we, we can start drinking more. <laughs> 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 All right. So, so given that we are in a huge health pandemic, sir, um, what would your message be to the whole world? Um, I think it, it's... Uh, I've been telling myself this because even for me, right? I like to be around a lot of people and it's been really hard to adjust to, to the current situation. And I shouldn't complain because I, I, I'm, I'm uh, lucky enough to have uh, a comfortable space to live in, right? Um, where I have uh, some freedom of movement, even if it's just inside my home, um, which a lot of people don't have. But I, I've been trying to tell myself that us, the world has gone through much worse crisis. Right in this in the past. I mean, if you look at uh, the bubonic plague, right, Black Death mm. in the 1300s, the Spanish flu, World War One, World War Two, I, I would consider those much worse crises than than 
than what we're going through now. Uh, and I'm not trying to, to underplay, right, uh, what, what's going on now, but, and we've always been able as humanity to get through that. So I think, obviously, continue to have hope. Um, we will get through this. Uh, we will come out of it stronger um, than, 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 uh, than before, uh, whether it be as individuals or as a company or as a country or uh, as a global community in general. We will get through this, but also it's very important for all of us to play our part, right, in trying to really get this crisis under control. As they say, flatten the curve, reduce the number of new cases until hopefully, you know, a, a vaccine or, or treatment um, is, is, is discovered, hopefully sooner rather than later. But I have no doubt in my mind that, that we will get through this, right? And we will come out of it stronger. Um, you know, just patience um, and all do our part in, in, in the way we can, right, to, to help. And if, if there's a way for you to give back, you know, to the people that, that need it the most, obviously, right, everyone should do that as well. Um, because there's a lot of people that are really struggling now and, um, and I, I can't imagine what, what millions of people are going through um, right now. No. All right. All right. Again, thank you so much. No, thank you, Renzo, for, for having us. <laughs> Super fun chat. Thank you for inspiring a lot of Filipinos. I hope marami kayong natutunan. I'm sure marami. Ako marami ako natutunan personally. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. All right, so I, before... No, I think, and again, there's a lot to learn from everybody, right? Uh, yes. Even me, I, I find that, as I said, right, I only know this much about brewing. Uh, there's so much more to learn, um, and, and that's what I enjoy about it the most. There's, there's so much more to learn, um, no matter what it is, and how good you, you think you are at something. Um, there's always someone that does it better and some, some, someone or something to learn from. All right. Wonderfully said, sir. All right. So before we end, uh, would you like to share any message or would you like to invite uh, people to check out your website? How will people try your beer from their, ho from their homes? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, it, uh, you know, I'd love to invite everyone to, to come visit uh, us at encanto.com.ph. Um, outside of, of just being a website, we have a full e-commerce platform there. Um, and now with, you know, with, with uh, GCQ in place and, and most of the liquor bans lifted throughout, throughout the, L, the different LGUs in the country, um, we're really hoping, hoping to, to really market that so people are more aware um, of, our, of our website. Um, and the fact that by, by this month, uh, we'll be doing next day deliveries um, and, and hopefully very soon introducing COD as well as a form of as a form of payment. But yes, out, and outside of, of visiting, visiting us at encanto.com.ph, also come, come try our product in, in SNR or Family Mart or Landers or Boozy, um, SM and, and Landmark, because um, they're also all very supportive and, and carrying our products now. So you're not limited to just, just our website if you want, if you want our beers for your, for your home consumption requirements. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. So, guys, you have to try this beer. This is amazing. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thanks so much, Renzo. Maraming salamat. And let me, know, let me know what you think of, of the pale ale after. Send ah, me yeah. send your feedback on both. Maybe I'll try to uh, take a video later and then show it with the audience as well. Fantastic. All right. All right, cheers. Thanks, Renzo. <laughs> take care. Ingat, ha? Thank you. Alright, sana marami kayong natutunan guys. Before we end, let's try out this Pale Ale by Encanto. Encanto beer. So, open on this. Alright, so kanina we tried the lager during the interview. Ngayon naman, we're gonna try the Pale Ale. Let's see the difference. So you have to make it bubble. Alright, so same color. Check natin yung lager. 
Ito yung lager. This is the pale ale. Halos same lang siya. Check natin yung taste. Ah, mas sweet yung yung smell niya. Wow. Alright, so masarap rin siya. Mas fruity siya compared to the lager. Pero at the same time, mas mas malakas siya ng konti. So may aftertaste siya na medyo bitter, pero masarap pa rin. Alright, so that's it guys. Try nyo. Encanto beer. Sobrang sarap.